It's October 28th, 2019, and as always, Roll for Crate is here to bring you your brand new board game releases from the past week. So get your candy buckets out and start eating and start watching. Our first release is based off a video game from the Saints Row series. It's Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon. This is a team-based for two players or four players campaign game where you're facing off over the course of different scenarios with a 3D board and the environments are destructible. So parts of them will be destroyed, buildings can collapse. Some very interesting stuff going on there. That's a cool new one. Uh, Circadians. First Light is coming from Renegade Game Studios, and this was on Kickstarter earlier in the year, and now it is available in wide release. It is from one of the designers of the West Kingdom series, so you know there's some a good pedigree there. It's a spacefaring game. You're going out and exploring a planet. It's worker placement, but your workers are dice, and that is your crew, and you're using them to explore and meet new crazy alien races. Decrypto has its first expansion, Laser Drive. This is the word guessing game that is for teams and you're trying to figure out what clues the other team is giving to know what their secret words are. This one adds a twist to it in that you need to align your clues to a certain category like a movie title or words that start with a certain letter. And if you do so, you'll get a bonus, but maybe it makes it easier for the other team to guess as well. Dice Settlers is getting an expansion, Western Sea. Uh, this is a civilization building game from last year uh, where you have your own pool of dice in a bag, you're reaching in, rolling them, getting different actions from them. This one adds a bunch of new custom dice, new technologies you can develop, and it's all modular so you can pick and choose what you want to add from it. Uh, and D&D has two brand new sets of monster cards. They are for Mordenkainen's Tomb of Foes and Volo's Guide to Monsters. So if you are a DM and you want to have a convenient set of cards to give you all the monster stats you need from those books, you can check those out right now. Escape Tales is adding the newest iteration to its line titled Low Memory. If you don't know what Escape Tales is, it's sort of an escape room game, but unlike many others, which sort of pressure you with a timer, this one's more about a narrative experience where there is no timer, but you sort of have only a limited number of actions. And you'll go through multiple different rooms and try to find out what's going on. We have a new King of Tokyo monster pack. If you don't know what these are, they're pretty much standalone monsters you can throw into your game. And they also seem to have a bit more uh, gimmicky or new weird things besides just having a new monster and cards. This one, titled Cybertooth, is actually a transforming creature. It has a robot humanoid mode, but also a Sabertooth cat mode, where you can jump between them. So you can take advantage, or if you're a fan of Transformers like I am. Uh, we have Magic Made Kids. This looked like it was out uh, in other places, but this is like it's now out in America, in the US. I guess I should specify. Uh, this is a more child-friendly version of Magic Maze, which you are all working together but you can only do certain action yourself and you can't talk in the base one. This one is meant to be a little bit simple for kids and like the base one, each scenario sort of slowly teaches the players how to play the game by introducing new mechanics. Pathfinder has a new book for the second edition titled Lost Omens Character Guide. This will add not only new things for the already established races and stuff, but add some new races as well. It adds hobgoblins, which are a bit more warlike, uh, lizard folk, which are a bit curious, and then a tree race, or plant race, I should say. So you can either grow the uh, campaign you already have going or try out one of these new races. Finally, War Chest, the game from AEG, is getting an expansion, Nobility. This adds more pieces to the acclaimed game, uh, which is a two-player sort of chess-like game, but or four-player if you play on teams of two. And so if you want more variety in your pieces you can use, you can buy this expansion now. Some cool things to be excited about, both for base games and expansions. Uh, we actually picked up both the King of Tokyo and Decrypto at uh, Gen Con, and I'm really excited to, both of them I had uh, excited about, in particular uh, later on when we get a nice big group together, I think, to do the Decrypto, because I really do enjoy that game a lot. Yeah, that's a really fun war party word game, mm -hmm. if you like those types of games, which we do. Uh, the King of Tokyo, uh, I, I don't know if I have personally ever delved into those little monster expansions, the mini ones. I've but. done a little bit, and they're cool because, like I said, they add a bit more weird things. The other ones, uh, there's King Kong, literally King Kong, and he actually adds a tower for him to like climb, and then like, Cthulhu has cultists, little uh, deep ones, and then the Anubis one actually has a, uh, his own pyramid die because he throws curses around. Uh, the Escape Tales, like I said, 
go watch our video on and you're curious what it's like. I think uh, it's an interesting take and we're already fans of those kinds of heavy narrative stories. And I'm a little torn because I feel like that one could have continued into a new chapter. But I understand that it's hard. I know LCG packs alone are hard to like if you want to continue the story. Like, hey, maybe it'll maybe it'll tie in. Maybe somehow. a little bit it could, yeah, but it did say <laughs> it's standalone. It's standalone, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll see. But it is more cyberpunky, which is pretty cool. I love these kind of puzzle games. There's only if I mean I mentioned in the video. There's one puzzle I hated because I solved it, but just because they required you to like look at the cards really, it just wasn't working in my eyes. Yeah, there was, uh, I had a few issues with that game, but overall I'm really curious to see what they do with that one and see if they evolve the format at all or if it's just a new story, new puzzles. Well, I think what is also, what I would like to see them do is because it's low memory cyberpunk, which is technology, maybe they could more AR it a bit because you do use a cell phone to like click which puzzles you right, have that's and stuff true. like that. So mm. I think they it would be really awesome if they took advantage of that if there was something that like took that next step further. Yeah, that could be cool. Uh, Agents of Mayhem is an interesting one. We actually got a review copy of that, so hopefully we'll be giving you our opinion on that in the relatively near future. But I'm pretty intrigued by that, having not played almost any Saints Row stuff or the specific one this is based on, but the look of the board, like I said, it's like fully 3D and you can like, you're climbing up buildings and stuff. Uh, definitely they're going for something in that one. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's a campaign game, but it's competitive, is also interesting, I think. Not a legacy or anything, but it's interesting. I wonder how that evolves too as it goes right. on. And all the parents out there, I definitely su <laughs> suggest you take a look at the Magic Maze kids because even Magic Maze, I think it's a fun game and not only that, it really forces to be cooperative. You can't, you know, just sort of take all the glory for yourself, which I think <laughs> it would be probably actually a very good lesson for kids. Yeah, they should learn a lesson for <laughs> once. Uh, so let us know which of these games are you buying this week? What are you playing? Of course, it's Halloween season, so get the last of your spooky games in before the month is mm -hmm. over. Uh, and we also real quick want to say, speaking of Halloween, oh, yes. that uh, you should stay tuned because on Halloween, on our channel, uh, I'm going to say around 6 p.m. in the evening, <laughs> we're going to be streaming... Uh, uh, some special video game stuff. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll keep it. Maybe we should we tease it? Should we tell them what we're going to be doing? Or uh... Uh, well, it, it'd be very interesting. But keep, follow us on like Instagram and Twitter. We'll post updates there, just in case there's a weird time shift or maybe some other. Cool and stuff. on YouTube, if you're subscribed, you should. Right. You know, you'll get an alert if you ring the bell and everything, because we're going to be streaming it right here on our channel. Also, right after Halloween, you know, we enter November, which is Extra Lifetime. Mm -hmm. We won't be streaming on the day that is their scheduled Extra Life, but stay tuned because we will announce when we're actually going to do our fun game stream. Yeah, so uh, stay tuned for all that. And, of course, let us know if you have any suggestions or other stuff for the future, too, because we're always mm -hmm. interested in your input. It's good. But until the full moon rises, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this is Roll for Crit. Hey, go ahead, like and subscribe, and support our Patreon for even more board game content. Support us now to hear the audio expansion, where you can hear all the other nerdy things we've been up to.